Okay. So, okay. So that's meaningful for me. That. Um. So. So. Material world, material world is characterized by miseries, which can be described in terms of the four, the four essential problems, birth, death, old age, disease. There's, of course, uh, a special emphasis on disease these days. And, and the miseries of the material world can be characterized by those disturbances caused by our own body and mind, those disturbances caused by natural disturbances, those disturbances caused by other living entities, whether it's neighbors or whether it's little germs, okay? So that's the context of the material world. There's also other forms of disturbances, the propensity to cheat, uh, limitations, the propensity to make mistakes. So this is part of the context of material existence. And we'll, yeah, we'll use that terminology. This, these, these are metaphors that Prabhupada uses. We might say the inoculation, the, va the, the, the vaccination, the vaccination is to increase hearing and chanting. Prahlad Maharaj describes nine processes of devotional service. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Arjanam, Dasinam, Sakyam. And the foundational processes, because even if we do the other processes, they're meant to be accompanied by Shravanam Kirtanam. Like even if we're doing Archanam, deity worship, it's meant to be accompanied by, by hearing and chanting, like that. So, so hearing and chanting of the name, the glories, the pastimes, the entourage, the followers of the Supreme Personality of God, Krishna describes in Bhagavad Gita, Janma Karma Chmei Divyam Evam Yoga Ti Tattvita Chattvideham Tum Punar Janma Neti Mama Ti Eti Sarjana. Krishna describes one who realizes the actual nature, the transcendental nature of my pastimes and activities. Such a person is, is liberated from the material miseries. So, Okay, so this thing with the pandemic and isolation and the economic shutdown, like all, this is a material disturbance and it's to be expected in the material realm. Material realm, sure, it's a geography and more essentially it's a consciousness. For a particular consciousness, we attract material energy to us. The soul's like a magnet. And so, our opportunity, our test, you might say, is to respond to the context of the material disturbances with deepened, strengthened, expanded, increased hearing and chanting. By doing that, we are we're vaccinated. By doing that, the material disturbances go away. No, they don't go away. But we're not disturbed by them. That's what it means to be dira, dirasatra muyate. Because it's, it's kind of simplistic or childish to think in terms of uh, um, it'll just go away. No, this, that's, that's just part of the complexity of material nature, including our own mind, our material mind. And so we absorb ourselves in the shelter of kirtan, in the, in term, whether it's kirtan with instruments and singing, whether it's Kirtan really means to describe or to glorify. And so, if some of you know in the past time, Prabhupada was in a, a, a small center, and during the day, during in the morning, he would dictate his transcendental personal ecstasies, his, the, the purports to his books, and, um, and then they would type, and they would type during the day, and they were worried that the typing was disturbing Prabhupada. So they asked him, is this disturbing you? The prophet said, oh, I hear that typing is kirtan, that, that typing is kirtan, because they're typing the transcendental purports. So transcendental means we take shelter in transcendence. That's the bliss of the soul. We inc that we increase hearing and chanting. We increase hearing and chanting 
and then we're inoculated, then, then we're not disturbed by the disturbances. We notice the disturbances and we naturally, naturally are more and more expert in responding to the disturbances of material nature from the transcendental platform. And that's the actual secret to transform matter into spirit. So, of course, as we know, Srila Prabhupada, he gave us a whole program to be absorbed in Shravanam Kirtanam up to 24 hours per day, seven days per week to whatever, according to our desire. He gave us a whole program for that. And part of his program was some special days like this, uh, this uh, appearance, uh, the celebration of the anniversary of the appearance day of Lord Ramachandra, special days to particularly focus on celebrating, glorifying, hearing and chanting about um, different incarnations of Krishna today, the appearance day of Lord Ramachandra. And um, so it's described in a few places in Bhagavatam, uh, especially the ninth canto. In a few weeks, there's, there's the appearance day of Lord, uh, uh, Hanuman's coming soon, and the appearance day of Lord Nishimha Dev of a few about three weeks ago was the three four weeks ago was the uh, Gaur Pranim, the appearance day of Lord Chaitanya. So, so Krishna, his expansions, and his pure devotees, like Srila Prabhupada's appearance day, Bhakti Stanta's appearance day, Bhakti Vinaya Guru's disappearance day, appearance day. Okay, so, so these are so every day we're meant to to focus in on hearing and chanting. That, that's the shelter. That, that's the safe shelter. That's the safe shelter. And, um, um, and like this, you know, we might know that at some level. And actual spiritual, spiritual intelligence is, is shown in our actions. How, how much are we present, focused, increasing our hearing and chanting and encouraging others in that process of hearing and chanting? So, chapter 10 of Canto 9 of Srimad Bhagavatam, I'll start by reading the summary. This 10th chapter describes how Lord Ramachandra appeared in the dynasty of Maharaj Kadvanga. It also describes the Lord's activities, telling how he killed Ravana and returned to Ayodhya, the capital of his kingdom. The son of Maharaj Kadvanga was Dirgabahu, and his son was Raghu. The son of Raghu was Aja, the son of Aja was Dasharat, and the son of Dasharat was Lord Ramachandra, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When the Lord descended into this world in his full quadruple expansion as Lord Ramachandra, Lakshman, Bharat, and Shatrugna, great sages like Valmiki, who were actually in knowledge of the absolute truth, described his transcendental pastimes. Srila Shukadev Goswami describes these pastimes in brief. Lord Ramachandra went with Vishvamitra and killed Rakshasas like Maricha. After breaking the stout and strong bow known as Haridanu, the Lord married Mother Sita and cut down the prestige of Parashuram. To obey the order of his father, he entered the forest accompanied by Lakshman and Sita. There he cut off the nose of Shuparnaka and killed the associates of Ravana headed by Kara and Dushana. Ravana's kidnapping of Sita Devi was the beginning of this demon's misfortune. When Maricha assumed the form of a golden deer, Lord Ramachandra went to bring the deer to please Sita Devi. But in the meantime, Ravana took advantage of the Lord's absence to kidnap her. When Sita Devi was kidnapped, Lord Ramachandra, accompanied by Lakshman, searched for her throughout the forest. In the course of this search, they met Jatayu. Then the Lord killed the demon Kabanda and the commander of Ali and established a friendly relationship with Sugriva. After organizing the military strength of the monkeys and going with them to the shore of the sea, the Lord awaited the arrival of Samudra, the ocean personified. But when, Sudra did not, but, but when Samudra did not come, the Lord, the master of Samudra, became angry. Then Samudra came to the Lord with great haste and surrendered to him, wanting to help him in every way. The Lord then attempted to bridge the ocean, and with the help of advice from Vibhisana, 
He attacked Ravana's capital, Lanka, previously. Hanuman, the eternal servant of the Lord, had set fire to Lanka, and now, with the help of Lakshman, the forces of Lord Ramachandra killed all the Rakshasa soldiers. Then Lord Ramachandra personally killed Ravana. Mando, Dari, and other wives lamented for Ravana, and in accordance with Lord Ramachandra's order, Vibhisan performed the funeral ceremonies for all the dead in the family. Lord Ramachandra then gave Vibhisan the right to rule Lanka and also granted him a long duration of life. The Lord delivered Sita Devi from the Ashoka forest and carried her in a flower airplane to his capital, Ayodhya, where he was received by his brother Bharat. When Lord Ramachandra entered Ayodhya, Bharat brought his wooden shoes. Vibhisan and Sugriva held a whisk and fan. Hanuman carried an umbrella. Shatrugna carried the Lord's bow and two quivers, and Sita Devi carried a water pot containing water from holy places. Angada carried a sword, and Jambava and Riksharaj carried a shield. After Lord Ramachandra, accompanied by Lord Lakshman and Mother Sita Devi, met all his relatives, the great sage Vasishta enthroned him as king. The chapter ends with a short description of Lord Ramachandra's rule in Ayodhya. I'll mention this, Jambavan also appears two million years later in Krishna's pastimes. And Krishna ends up uh, marrying one of Jambavan's uh, daughter, Jambavati. So text one reads, Sri Shukho Vacha Katvanga Dirgabhavus Charagus Tasma Kritu Shrava Ajas Tato Maharajas Tasma Dasha Reto Bhava Shukadeva Goswami said, The son of Maharaj Katvanga was Dirgabahu, and his son was the celebrated Maharaj Raghu. From Maharaj Raghu came Ajra, and from Ajra was born the great personality Maharaj Dasarat. Being prayed for by the demigods, the supreme personality of Godhead, the absolute truth himself, directly appeared with his expansion and expansions of the expansion. Their holy names were Ram, Lakshman, Bharat, and Shatrugna. These celebrated incarnations thus appeared in four forms as the sons of Maharaj Dasarat. Purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. Lord Ramachandra and his brothers, Lakshman, Bharat, and Shatrugna, are all Vishnu Tattva, not Jiva Tattva. The Supreme Personality of Godhead expands into many, many forms. Although they are one and the same, Vishnu Tattva has many forms and incarnations. As confirmed in the Brahma Samhita 5.39, the Lord is situated in many forms, such as Ram, Lakshman, Bharat, and Shatrugna. And these forms may exist in any part of his creation. I'm just struck by that word. The Lord is situated in many forms, such as Ram, Lakshman, Bharat, and Shatrugna. And these forms may exist in any part of his creation. All these forms exist permanently, eternally, as individual personalities of Godhead. And they resemble many candles, all equally powerful. Lord Ramachandra, Lakshman, Bharat, and Shatrugna, who, being Vishnu Tattva, are all equally powerful, became the sons of Maharaj Dasarath in response to prayers by the demigods. Text 3 reads, Tasyanu charitam rajan rishibhi sattva darshibhi shuttam hi varnitam bhuvi tvayasita patermu O King Parikshit, the transcendental activities of Lord Ramachandra have been described by great saintly persons who have seen the truth. Because you have heard again and again about Lord Ramachandra, the husband of Mother Sita, I shall describe these activities only in brief. Please listen. So, in the purport, Sri Prabhupada writes, Modern Rakshasas posing as educationally advanced merely because they have doctorates, have tried to prove that Lord Ramachandra is not the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but an ordinary person. 
But those who are learned and spiritually advanced will never accept such notions. They will accept the descriptions of Lord Ramachandra and his activities only as presented by Tattvadarshis, those who know the absolute truth. In Bhagavad Gita 4.34, the Supreme Personality of Godhead advises, just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master. Inquire from him submissively and render service unto him. The self-realized soul can impart knowledge unto you because he has seen the truth. Unless one is a tattvadarshi in complete knowledge of the absolute truth, one cannot describe the activities of the personality of Godhead. Therefore, although there are many so-called Ramayans or histories of Lord Ramachandra's activities, some of them are not actually authoritative. Sometimes Lord Ramachandra's activities are described in terms of one's own imaginations, speculation, or material sentiments, but the characteristics of Lord Ramachandra should not be handled as something imaginary. While describing the history of Lord Ramachandra, Shukadev Goswami told Maharaj Pariksit, you have already heard about the activities of Lord Ramachandra. Apparently, therefore, 5,000 years ago, there were many Ramayans or histories of Lord Ramachandra's activities, and there, are, and there are many still. But we must select only those books written by Tattvadarshis, Gyaninath Tattvadarshina, not the books of so-called scholars who claim knowledge only on the basis of a doctorate. This is a warning by Shukadeva Goswami, Rishi Bhistat Vidarishi. Although the Ramayan composed by Valmiki is a huge literature, the same activities are, activities are summarized here by Shukadeva Goswami in a few verses. Hmm. Yes, and so such a vital point, and Prabhupada emphasized it. There's, there's a verse, uh, Prabhupada quotes a lot. Uh, verse, Shuti Smriti Puranadi Pancharachavidin Vida, Akantiki Harir Bhakti Udpataya Yaga So that verse describes about and the Vedas, the Vedas, the Shruti Vedas, and the sh sh uh, Shruti and Smriti Vedas. And there's Puranadi Puranadi. Sometimes Prabhupada talks about Mother Veda and Sister Puranas. Mother Vedas and Sister Puranas, and uh, and the, the idea and, and the narrative Pancharatra. So that, because we talked earlier about to inoculate ourselves from the disturbances of material life, material context, to increase hearing and chanting. And that hearing and chanting to be effective, to be potent, must be according according to the Tattvadarshis, Tadviti Paripatena. Otherwise, there's no potency. <clears throat> this is so important. Prabhupada's pointing out that even 5,000 years ago, there was versions of Ramayana that were not bona fide. So it's also now, we can hear about Shiva and Rama, we hear about Krishna, we hear about the gopis from sources that are not bona fide. And what that Shruti Smriti Puranadi verse says, it's not just not potent, but it, it's a disturbance that we endeavor to engage in devotional service, Shravan and Kirtan, in a way that's not authorized through a, a bona fide parampara, like we have through Srila Prabhupada. We, we, we get to represent Srila Prabhupada by presenting, by presenting what he gives as it is. Sure, according to our own inspiration, our own realization, through our own personality, not changing the meaning not changing the meaning, presenting it as it is, then, then we get, we like that term, we get to be a stand for spiritual transformation. We get to be a touchstone for transformation. And that if we, if we endeavor to do bhakti, that's not according to Shruti Smriti Puranadi Pancharatra Vidhi Vida, then it's described, it's a dis Rupa Goswami, then it's a disturbance, just a disturbance. That's why it's like, it's important. To, to be, it's our responsibility to use our intelligence to discriminate what's bona fide and what's 
what's what's like a shadow and a deviation from the real thing that like gives it an ear of something spiritual or bhakti or something like that. So very key point, hearing and chanting and and hearing and chanting that truly represents eternal, transcendental, flawless, infallible vibration. Text for it now. Again, I've, I've never read a Ramayan cover to cover. I have uh, had Krishna Dharma's version, which isn't too long. I haven't even read that. But here, here in the ninth uh, canto, Shukadeva Goswami, he, take, he probably takes like about 600 pages and puts it into one verse. He, re, he really summarizes. <clears throat> so text four. To keep the promise of his father intact, Lord Ramachandra immediately gave up the position of king and, accompanied by his wife, Mother Sita, wandered from one forest to another on his lotus feet, which were so delicate that they were unable to bear even the touch of Sita's palms. The Lord was also accompanied by Hanuman, or by another monkey, Tugriva, mm. king of the monkeys, and by his own younger brother, Lord Lakshman, both of whom gave him relief from the fatigue of wandering in the forest, having cut off the nose and ears of Suparnaka, thus disfiguring her, the Lord was separated from Mother Sita. He therefore became angry, moving his eyebrows, and thus frightening the ocean, who thus allowed the Lord to construct a bridge to cross the ocean. Subsequently, the Lord entered the kingdom of Ravana to kill him like a fire devouring a forest. May that Supreme Lord Ramachandra give us all protection. I'll just fill in a few gaps there. So you say, why did Ramachandra cut off the nose of Supernaka? Uh, one thing I've heard that he, this was you know, on, a, on a, a video I saw more than 30 years ago. So again, I've never read the Ramayana, but I heard that he, it's actually Lakshman who did that. Um, and that's, it's called Supernaka, who was the sister of Ravana. She wanted to enjoy and have relations with Lord Ramachandra. But Lord Ramachandra, his, a big part of his pastimes is like re being really virtuous and, and, and the, the ideal follower of virtuous principles. And so he's, he's uh, Ekapatni Vrat, one wife. So, oh, I am already married. Now, of course, Sita, so, so Supernaka attempted to violently attack and kill Sita. And that's when Lakshman said, no, that, that's, that's not tolerable. And so he, he defended Sita. So that's what it was. Now, Krishna, of course, is it's described departure, departure, even. Prabhupada gives that metaphor there that Krishna is the original candle and his expansion, like each candle is equally powerful, but still there's the original candle that lights the other candles. And so Krishna's pastimes, not completely, but in, in some aspects, he, he's illustrating that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is transcendental to rules and regulations. Of course, also like in Dwarka, Krishna would get up at the Brahma more to hour, and his wives were not happy that he got out of bed. So, um, but we see like with Krishna's dancing with the gopis and things like that, that he's showing that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is transcendental to rules and regulations. And whatever he does is all good. Lord Ramachandra's pastimes, for the most part, he's showing the ideal virtuous character adhering to rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yes, yeah, so that, that's, that was the thing with uh, Suvarnaka, that um, she tried to attack Sita, because in her mind, Sita was in the way of her enjoying with Lord Ram. So text five. We, Can I yeah. comment on that? Yeah, sure. Because I remember yesterday we spoke about um, Radharani's grandmother, I forgot her name. Purnamasi. Purnamasi. And she kind of pointed that that was, that, that, that was a break of the rules and regulations in a sense. Because Lord Ramachandra, he would 
who was supposed to accept her actually as a wife because he's yeah. a Kshatriya, but yeah. to make, I guess, like to make a stand. That's how I always envisioned it, that he actually broke the rules too, kind of like Krishna in the Rasa dance, but yeah. in the complete opposite way. Yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> Purnas. Uh, Purnas, yes. Hare Krishna. So, because Radharani's grandmother was in a, a mood of criticizing Krishna. Yeah. And she said, just, just look what uh, Krishna did in his expansion as, as Ram. Vishwamitra Dvareena Marichadya Nishachara Pashyato Lakshmanasyaiva Hatta Nairita Punga. In the arena of the sacrifice performed by Vishwamitra, Lord Ramachandra, the king of Ayodhya, killed many demons, rakshasas, and uncivilized men who wandered at night in the mode of darkness. May Lord Ramachandra, who killed these demons in the presence of Lakshman, be kind enough to give us protection. O king, the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra were wonderful, like those of the baby elephant. In the assembly where Mother Sita was to choose her husband in the midst of the heroes of this world, he broke the bow belonging to Lord Shiva. This bow was so heavy that it was carried by 300 men. But Lord Ramachandra bent and strung it and broke it in the middle, just as a baby elephant breaks a stick of sugar cane. Thus the Lord achieved the hand of Mother Sita, who was equally as endowed with transcendental qualities of form beauty, behavior, age, and nature. Indeed, she was the goddess of fortune who constantly rests on the chest of the Lord. While returning from Sita's home, after gaining her the assembly of competitors, Lord Ramachandra met Parashuram. Although Parashuram was very proud, having rid the earth of the royal order 21 times, he was defeated by the Lord who appeared to be a kshatriya of the royal order. Sometimes it's described there are three Rams. There's Balaram, Krishna's brother. There's Lord Ramachandra, and there's Parashuram. Parashuram is also a Vishnu Tattva expansion of Krishna. And there's, there's fights between Ram and Ram. Lord Ramachandra fights Parashuram. The stories, the pastimes of Parashuram are also described in this ninth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. And he got, he got mightily upset with the corrupt Kshatriyas, and he destroyed them generation after generation. Carrying out, so text eight reads of chapter 10, carrying out the order of his father, who was bound by a promise to his wife, Lord Ramachandra left behind his kingdom, opulence, friends, well-wishers, residents, and everything else, just as a liberated soul gives up his life and went to the forest with Sita. While wandering in the forest where he accepted a life of hardship, carrying his invincible bow and arrows in his hand, Lord Ramachandra deformed Ravana's sister who was polluted with lusty desires by cutting off her nose and ears. He also killed her 14,000 Rakshasa friends, headed by Kara, Trishira, and Dushana. O King Parikshit, when Ravana, who had ten heads on his shoulders, heard about the beautiful and attractive features of Sita, his mind was agitated by lusty desires, and he went to kidnap her. To distract Lord Ramachandra from his ashram, Ravana sent Maricha in the form of a golden deer. And when Lord Ramachandra saw that wonderful deer, he left his residence and followed it and finally killed it with a sharp arrow, just as Lord Shiva killed Daksha. So this uh, uh, the pastime with Maricha tricking Sita, what, where, where, where does Prabhupada uh, reference that pastime? November 10th, 1977. Ramachandra said, November 10th, 1977. It's important, yeah. Yeah, and so, so Prabhupada, he, he departed his disappearance for these great acharyas. We, we don't use the term 
<clears throat> Before Pesach, that's correct, but to Cyril Morel, thank you. We don't, I mean, sometimes people will talk about Krishna's birthday or, you know, a spiritual master's birthday. Technically, we say appearance, because it's not like a, a birth, like our birth, forced by the mode, by my desires and the modes of nature, I'm forced to take birth in a particular species or death, that um, I'm, I'm forced to leave this body that, that's material. So for those for whom everything is get to, everything is pastime, Krishna, his expansions and his pure devotees, they're choosing their time and way of appearance. They're, they, they're not, it's not born or die, dying by the modes of nature. It's a, it's a conscious co-creation with Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, yeah, so uh, just a few days before I had passed away on November 14th, 1977. And a few days before that, he was like, he was uh, manifesting the past, past times of illness in his, uh, in, in his, his bed, in his room in Vrindavan. <laughs> and, um, and he, uh, he really, he, he expressed that he, he liked to go on parikram around Vrindavan. Parikram is like he would go on a bullock cart, a cart pulled by bulls. And, um, and so, so some of Prabhupada's caretakers said, oh, Prabhupada, that will, uh, you know, that will kill you because you're not strong enough to do that. You're not strong enough to do that. <clears throat> And so Prabhupada was quite insisted. No, no, I, that's really what I want to do. And at one point, one of his caretakers said, Prabhupada, to do that, that's suicide. And Prabhupada said, staying here is also suicide. And then one of his caretakers said, so you need to, you need to choose which suicide. And then Prabhupada said, and then Prabhupada said, uh, um, Ram will kill or Ravana will kill? Better to be killed by Ram. Eh? He actually says, eh? Yeah. Okay, so very important. So what's that mean? So, so Maricha, <clears throat> so Maricha, Ra, Ravana approached him and Ma, Maricha had he, had, he was like a magician. And so Ravana said, okay, look, I want you to go take this form of this enchanting golden deal, the deer, and enchant Sita. And then Sita will send, you know, then Ram and Lakshman will leave her relatively unprotected. It's all story. But um, so Maricha could see, Maricha knew who Lord Ramachandra was. And he thought, okay, if I, if I don't go and and bewilder Sita, I'm going to be killed on the spot by Ravana. If I stay here, I'm going to be killed by Ravana. And if I go, I know I'm going to be killed by Ram. So he thought, it's more auspicious to be killed by Ram than by the demon Ravana. <laughs> so better to go and be killed by Ram. Yeah. So Prabhupada on November 10th, 1977, he was saying, he was saying, yes, okay, so if I go, it's suicide. If I stay, it's suicide. Better to go and be killed by, by Ram than to stay and be killed by Ravana. So Prabhupada invokes this, this pastime as a very transcendentally brilliant metaphor on the spot there. Text 11 reads, when Ramachandra entered the forest. May I add something? Yes, yes. I because I spoke with Gargamoni about his disappearance past times a lot when I, I visited him in Vrindavan and later I researched that and uh, what he told me it was confronted and I'm, I, was, I was about to bring it in the evening but for some of you it was not going to be present in the evening. Um, the parikram actually that Prabhupada wanted to do was the same parikram Balaram did all around India uh-huh. which is like crazy if you think about it because on the bullet cars it would take half a year or something That's like that right. but Prabhupada he was in, uh, how, how we say in Sakoto, he was in clear intention, clear intention that, clear that that's intention. the cure. Yeah, he, he, that was the cure. And he had a plan, he, he wanted the disciples to wait for him in, in designated spots and arrange for Kirtan and Pandal, and he would go with one servant all around South India to be, um, 
yeah, Kurukshetra and then back to Radama like that for like a whole year or something. So. Thanks for sharing that. And we'll speak about it in the evening. I'll bring the conversation. Yeah, nice, nice. All right, Krishna. We'll read a few more verses and then continue to open it up for discussion. Text 11. When Ramachandra entered the forest and Lakshmi was also absent, the worst of the Rakshasas, Ravana, kidnapped Sita Devi, the daughter of the king of Videha, just as a tiger seizes unprotected sheep when the shepherd is absent. Then Lord Ramachandra wandered in the forest with his brother Lakshman as if very much distressed due to separation from his wife. Thus he showed by his personal example the condition of a person attached to women. Lord Ramachandra, whose lotus feet are worshipped by Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, had assumed the form of a human being. Thus he performed the funeral ceremony of Jatayu, who was killed by Ravana. The Lord then killed the demon named Kabanda, and after making friends with the monkey chiefs, killing Bali and arranging for the deliverance of Mother Sita, he went to the beach of the ocean. After reaching the beach, Lord Ramachandra fasted for three days, awaiting the arrival of the ocean personified. When the ocean did not come, the Lord exhibited his pastimes of anger, and simply by his glancing over the ocean, all the living entities within it, including the crocodiles and sharks, were agitated by fear. Then the personified ocean fearfully approached Lord Ramachandra, taking all paraphernalia to worship him. Falling at the Lord's lotus feet, the personified ocean spoke as follows. O oh, all-pervading supreme person, we are dull-minded and did not understand who you are. But now we understand that you are the supreme person, the master of the entire universe, the unchanging and original personality of Godhead. The demigods are infatuated with the mode of goodness, the Prajapadis with the mode of passion, and the Lord of Ghosts with the mode of ignorance but you are the master of all these qualities. Mm. Mm. My Lord, you may use my water as you like. Indeed, you may cross it and go to the abode of Ravana, who is the great source of disturbance and crying for the three worlds. He is the son of Vishrava, but is condemned like urine. Please go kill him and thus regain your wife, Sita Devi. Oh, great hero. Although my water presents no impediment to your going to Lanka, please construct a bridge over it to spread your transcendental fame. Upon seeing this wonderfully uncommon deed of your lordship, all the great heroes and kings in the future will glorify you. And then in the purport, Srila Prabhupada writes, it is said that a sun and urine emanate from the same source, the gentles. When a son is a devotee or a great learned person, the seminal discharge for begetting a son is successful. But if the son is unqualified and brings no glory to its family, he is no better than urine. <laughs> Here, Ravana is compared to urine because he was a cause of disturbances to the three worlds. Thus, the ocean personified wanted him killed by Lord Ramachandra. One feature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Ramachandra, is omnipotence. The Lord can act without regard to material impediments or inconveniences. But to prove that he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and was not merely advertised as Godhead or elected by popular vote, he constructed a wonderful bridge over the ocean. Nowadays, it has become fashionable to create some artificial God who performs no uncommon activities. A little magic will bewilder a foolish person into selecting an artificial God because he does not understand how powerful God is. Lord Ramachandra, however, constructed a bridge over the water with stone by making the stone float. This is proof of God's uncommonly wonderful power. Why should someone be accepted as God without displaying extraordinary potency by doing something never to be done by any common man? We accept Lord Ramachandra as, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead because he constructed this bridge and accept Lord Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead because he lived in Govardhan Hill when he was only seven years old. We should not accept any rascal as God or an incarnation of God, for God displays special features in his various activities. Therefore, the Lord himself says in Bhagavad Gita 4.9, Punarjan Mandeti Madeti Sarjuna. 
One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. The activities of the Lord are not common. They are all transcendentally wonderful and not able to be performed by any other living being. The symptoms of the Lord's activities are all mentioned in the Shastras, and after one understands them, one can accept the Lord as he is. We'll read through the, uh, the uh, killing of, of Ravana by Lord Ramachandra. Mm -hmm. Shukadeva Goswami said, after constructing a bridge over the ocean by throwing into the water the peaks of mountains, whose trees and other vegetation had been shaken by the hands of great monkeys, Lord Ramachandra went to Lanka to release Sita Devi from the clutches of Ravana. With the direction and help of Vibhishan, Ravana's brother, the Lord, along with the monkey soldiers headed by Sugriva, Nila, and Hanuma, entered, entered Ravana's kingdom, Lanka, which had previously been burnt by Hanuma. After entering Lanka, the monkey soldiers, led by chiefs like Sugriva, Nila, and Hanuman, occupied all the sporting houses, granaries, treasuries, palace doorways, city gates, assembly houses, palace frontages, and even the resting houses of the pigeons. When the city's crossroads, platforms, flags, and golden water pots on its domes were all destroyed, the entire city of Lanka appeared like a river disturbed by a herd of elephants. When Ravana, the master of the Rakshasas, saw the disturbances created by the monkey soldiers, he called for Nikumba Kumba, Dumraksha, Durmukha, the Surantaka, Narantaka, and other Rakshasas, and also his son Indrajit. Thereafter, he called for Prahasta, Atikaya, Dikampana, and finally Kumbakarna. Then he induced all his followers to fight against the enemies. Lord Ramachandra, surrounded by Lakshman and monkey soldiers like Sugriva, Hanuman, Gandamada, Nila, Angada, Jambavan, and Panasa, attacked the soldiers of the Rakshasas, who were fully equipped with various invincible weapons like swords, Lances, bows, prasas, rishti, shakti, arrows, kagas, and tomaras. Angara and the other commanders of the soldiers of Ramachandra faced the elephants, infantry, horses, and chariots of the enemy and hurled against them big trees, mountain peaks, clubs, and arrows. Thus, the soldiers of Lord Ramachandra killed Ravana's soldiers who had lost all good fortune because Ravana had been condemned by the anger of Mother Sita. So in the purport, Prabhupada writes, the soldiers Lord Ramachandra recruited in the jungle were all monkeys and did not have proper equipment with which to fight the soldiers of Ravana. For Ravana's soldiers were equip equipped with weapons of modern warfare, whereas the monkeys could only throw stones, mountain peaks, and trees. It was only Lord Ramachandra and Lakshman who shot some arrows, but because the soldiers of Ravana were condemned by the curse of Mother Sita, the monkeys were able to kill them simply by throwing stones and trees. There are two kinds of strength, Daiva and Pushakar. Daiva refers to the strength achieved from the transcendence, and Pushakara refers to the strength organized by one's own intelligence and power. Transcendental power is always superior to the power of the materialist. Depending on the mercy of the Supreme Lord, one must fight one's enemies even though one may not be equipped with modern weapons. Therefore, Krishna instructed Arjuna, Mamanusmar Yudhyacha, think of me and fight. We should fight our enemy to the best of our ability, but for victory we must depend on the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Text 21, thereafter, when Ravana, the king of the Rakshasas, observed that his soldiers had been lost, he was extremely angry. Thus he mounted his airplane, which was decorated with flowers, and proceeded toward Lord Ramachandra, who sat on the effulgent chariot brought by Matali, the chariot driver of Indra. Then Ravana struck Lord Ramachandra with sharp arrows. Lord Ramachandra said to Ravana, you are the most abominable of the man-eaters. Indeed, you are like their stool. 
You resemble a dog, for as a dog steals eatables from the kitchen in the absence of the householder, in my absence you kidnap my, you kidnap my wife, Sitadev. Therefore, as Yamaraj punishes sinful men, I shall also punish you. You are most abominable, sinful, and shameless. Today, therefore, I, whose attempt never fails, shall punish you. After thus rebuking Ravana, Lord Ramachandra fixed an arrow to his bow, aimed at Ravana, and released the arrow which pierced Ravana's heart like a thunderbolt. Upon seeing this, Ravana's followers raised a tumultuous sound, crying, Alas, alas, what has happened? What has happened? As Ravana, vomiting blood from his ten mouths, fell from his airplane, just as a pious man falls to earth from the heavenly planets, when the results of his pious activities are exhausted. There, thereafter, all the women whose husbands had fallen in the battle, headed by Mandu Dari, the wife of Ravana, came out of Lanka, continuously crying, they approached the dead bodies of Ravana and the other Rakshasas striking their breasts in affliction because their husbands had been killed by the arrows of Lakshmi. The women embraced their respective husbands and cried piteously in voices appealing to everyone. O oh my Lord, O oh Master, you epitomized trouble for others and therefore you were called Ravana. But now that you have been defeated, we also are defeated for without you the state of Lanka has been conquered by the enemy. To whom will it go for shelter? Purport, Ravana's wife Mandodari and the other wives knew very well how cruel a person Ravana was. The very word Ravana means one who causes crying for others. Ravana continuously caused trouble for others, but when his sinful activities culminated in giving trouble to Sita Devi, he was killed by Lord Ramachandra. Navai Veda Mahabhaga Bhavan Kama Vashangata Tejo Nubhavam Sitaya O greatly fortunate one, you came under the influence of lusty desires, and therefore you could not understand the influence of Mother Sita. Now, because of her curse, you have been reduced to this state, having been killed by Lord Ramachandra. And Srila Prabhupada's purport, not only was Mother Sita powerful, but any woman who follows in the footsteps of Mother Sita can also become similarly powerful. There are many instances of this in the history of Vedic literature. Whenever we find a description of ideal chaste women, Mother Sita is amongst them. Mandodari, the wife of Ravana, was also very chaste. Similarly, Draupadi was one of five exalted chaste women. As a man must follow great personalities like Brahma and Narada, a woman must follow the path of such ideal women as Sita, Mandodari, and Draupadi. By staying chaste and faithful to her husband, a woman enriches herself with supernatural power. It is a moral principle that one should not be influenced by lusty desires for another's wife. Matrivat paradare shu. An intelligent person must look upon another's wife as being like his mother. This is a moral injunction from the Chanakya Shloka, number 10. Matrivat paradare shu, paradravye shu los dravat. Quote, one who considers another's wife as his mother and other's possessions as a lump of dirt and treats all other living beings as he would himself is considered to be learned. Thus Ravana was condemned not only by Lord Ramachandra but even by his own wife Mandudari. Because she was a chaste woman, she knew the power of another chaste woman, especially such a wife as Mother Sita Devi. Hare Krishna. Thanks for listening. Lord Ramachandra Ki Jai. Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. I welcome if anyone would like to share any comments, ask any questions, uh, share any realizations at this time. Hare Krishna. Yeah, Pat, back to Patrick, yes. Uh, hi, Krishna. Hi. Oh, here I am. Okay. Uh, I just want to share there's a couple of things that are most alive for me with 
Lord Ramachandra's pastimes, or what's the story, or Lord Ramachandra? And, uh, this year, at least, and um, one of them is um, so in the in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. There's uh, the uh, he encounters the Brahmin who's really mourning and grieving that Ravana captured Sita and just the fact that Ravana even had Sita, you know, that he was just really disturbed by that and was like really grieving that. That he could even touch Sita, they could even touch Sita. Yeah. yeah, that he even touched Sita, just he was really disturbed and broken up about that. Like it was like he was ruined, you know. And then, uh, and then Lord Chaitanya, I'd like to maybe maybe this evening maybe uh, research it in Rama's program to say more about it. But just that uh, then Lord Chaitanya leaves and then comes like uh, gets the conclusion of oh no that was actually Sita Mai it was like an illusory form of Sita it wasn't Sita's true form that Ravana that Ravana caught and that he came and back to the Brahman like traveled you know, long, far distance back to the Brahma, just to give him that good news that, look, Sita wasn't actually, it wasn't Sita, it was Sita Mai, it was a illusory form of Sita. Uh, that's really touching, moving, you know, pastime to me and helps me connect more with the pastime of Lord Ramachandra. And then you referenced uh, Srila Prabhupada's disappearance um, with, yeah, you know, better to be killed by Ram than Ravana. And it also reminds me of uh, this most recent Prabhupada's disappearance day. We were at um, Nalini Kanta's, and Nalini Kanta referenced <clears throat> Ramachandra's pastimes and that pastime of uh, Sita Mai, of like, oh, it was, it, it, Ravana didn't, Ravana wasn't able to get, <clears throat> wasn't able to get, uh, Sita, it was actually Sita Mai, and he referenced that with Prabhupada because you know, Prabhupada, did, Prabhupada didn't go on that parikram. So, um, you know, he was saying better to be killed by Ram than Ravana. He stayed, he was stayed, you know, with Ravana, and but then he was, you know, Nalini Kanta was offering that, and maybe it's speculation or something, but I appreciate it. He was offering, well, maybe that wasn't. Prabhupada, maybe that was another you know, Prabhupada Mai or something, you know, that wasn't uh, the real form of Prabhupada that, that they, uh, you know, had their hands on, Ravana had his hands on. So that's something that's alive for me that I'm like, uh, especially when you mentioned um, Prabhupada's disappearance today, that's what's alive for me with the story in uh, Ramachandra. One thing. Thanks, thanks for sharing, Bhakti Patrick. Yeah. So the, the, the pastime with Lord Chaitanya is after he, after he visited the Brahmin in South India, I think that was the, the Korma Brahmin. Yeah, he, he visited the, the, yes, and the Brahmin was destroyed. First of all, so Lord Chaitanya was associating with his Brahmin and he saw the Brahmin was depressed and destroyed. And the reason was not some ordinary mundane reasons because how, how could, uh, how could Ravana even touch Sita? So just the, such, it's a deep devotion for Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman. So then Lord Chaitanya continues his pastimes and in some temple in South India, I'm forgetting the names, in some temple in South India, in some storage room, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he finds some ancient scriptures that were unknown at the time. I mean, they, they, they were considered, they didn't, there was no uh, manifest form of them. He found the Brahma Samhita chapter five. So all those verses in Brahma Samhita, they didn't, they didn't exist. Uh, you know, in fact, the Lord, yeah, right. he, he found the Krishna Karnamrita, I believe, and he found the Agni Purana. And the Agni Purana, which is like a Purana, Prabhupada would say, Mother Vedas and Sister Puranas. It's a, it's a Purana primarily spoken by the, the fire god Agni. And the Agni Purana describes just what you described, that, Actually, Ravana took a, a Maya Sita. Remember when I, it's in my book, Krishna is around the Druze. The, um, the Druze sheiks, they would reveal, they have pastimes in their literature where there would be 
the real form of a person, and then an illusory form for a particular pastime. Very Vedic, very Vedic. So, yeah, so that's, that's, that's a beautiful expansion and deepening of the whole Ramayana pastime found in the Agni Purana, discovered, revealed by Lord Chaitanya, and as, as we get it from Srila Prabhupada through Krishna Das Kavirajas Goswami, um, uh, Chaitanya Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. And uh, yeah, yeah, I was at uh, Nalini Kanta Prabhu's place for the disappearance uh, pastime evening, a very wonderful celebration. And for sure, yeah, so uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that I you know, have clear realization of what Nalini Kanta was meaning, but uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, he reasons ill who tells that Vaishnavs die. When thou art living still in sound, Vaishnavs die to live in living tribe, to spread the holy name around. So in this conversation right now, Prabhupada's fully alive. He's fully alive. Um, Prabhupada dedicated his, his early 1960s version of the, his, his first edition of the Bhagavatam that he, he dedicated to Shilabhati Siddhanta. And he wrote, uh, he, he, he lives through ever. He lives forever through his divine instructions, and his and his sincere follower lives with him. So, of course, Srila Prabhupada is living through his instructions, through his books. Once they were interviewing Prabhupada, they said, "Who, will, after you die, who will be the successor of your movement?" <clears throat> and Prabhupada and Prabhupada said, "I will never die. I will, I shall live forever in my books, and you and you can take advantage." So, yeah. so it could, the the idea of Killing uh, the pure Vaishnav is, is, is a complete uh, uh, illusion of Maya, of course. Thanks for sharing, Bhakta Patrick. Yeah, I think for me, I, I think could for me, I could say, uh, um, hear my echo. Echo. But, uh, in conclusion, I think we can be, and there could be some of us, and we can be like that Brahmin so disturbed about, oh, those Ravanas got their hands on Prabhupada, like, and be really disturbed by that. And Lord Chaitanya comes and tells the Brahmin, look, don't worry, Sita, they didn't touch Sita. You know, so that is, it gives me some reassurance also. So if we're disturbed, like, oh, those, those Ravanas, they, they got their hands on Prabhupada. What did they do to Prabhupada? Then we can, you know, Lord Chaitanya can be like coming and saying, look, don't worry, they didn't. They didn't touch Prabhupada. You know, that's kind of the, uh, that's my uh, experience or whatever. Your, it's your experience. It's it's like your your practic, practical realization for you, for us today and now. From from those past times, I, I appreciate that very much. Thanks, Doctor Patrick. Um, um, I just want to uh, share what's happening as I'm sh I'm I'm hearing you, Patrick. Is that um, Sita, the Maya Sita, was burned in a fire. Like Sita was asked to enter the fire and she enters the fire and it described by how the Maya Sita was burned at that time and the real purity Sita, the real Sita came back. And, uh, and then for me, in terms of Prabhupada's pastime, it is represented by the fact that Prabhupada, he established his murti before, before his, he ended his pastime in, in that, you know, in that, um, form that was under the end of Ravana, he establishes Murti in the temple for people to really focus there. And I, I found it very significant. Thanks for sharing that, Malini. Uh, thanks for that. that. That is very significant because we often we say, yeah, Prabhupada, Prabhupada lives fully through his Vani. Okay, maybe the Vapu is gone, but he lives fully through his Vani. We often say that, I've said that, but it's really not true because, okay, there, just like there's different forms of Vani, there's books, there's a truck, there's different forms of Vapu. So, 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 so Prabhupada is fully present in his Morti, in his photograph. That's a Vapu form. So we, it's not accurate to say he doesn't exist in his Vapu form anymore. Um, well, I'll, since Malini shared, I'll share back, back in the early 2000s, say around 01, 02, because back in, starting in 98, I started writing some papers, some essays on Prabhupada's relationship with all members of his movement about Guru Tattva. And so I was having some correspondence 
with um, with uh, what was called a, a Shastric Advisory Committee, which was like the, the Shastric Advisory Committee of uh, of really the, the ISKCON GBC, and they were corresponding with me. And and I was making a few points about the essence of the process of initiation as Divya Gyan and um, you know, Vani, a few points like that. And just as an aside, I wasn't even making the point, but just as an aside, I mentioned like, yeah, for example, Prabhupada's president is Shruksi, he's president is Morti. And so the, the Shastrik Advisory Committee responded to me. It was one particular representing the committee, one particular scholar. And he, he, quote, he quoted my letter, he said, because I said, Didn't Prabhupada's, Prabhupada's present in his Morti form. And then what he said, representing the Shastri Advisory Committee, said, he, he wrote, Prabhupada's, Prabhupada's present in his Morti form, that's a novel idea. What? They said like that? I have it in writing. Oh my yeah, God. I have it in writing. He, he wrote, that's a novel idea. And he went on to, to kind of ridicule the idea. And so now these, these, these are the intellectual scholarly Shastric leaders of, of the international organization. It's, that's a novel idea. And he went on to, um, yeah, to, to derive that idea. And I'm thinking like, well, like before I came to Prabhupada's teachings, I didn't have much of any spirituality or religion. I mean, I was, you know, grew up in reform Judaism, secular, things like that. But one thing I know, is like, you know, we shouldn't worship idols. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the, you know, that, that's the one thing I kind of do. We shouldn't worship idols. I really resonate with that. You can resonate. That's the one thing I got. So like, if Prabhupada's not fully present as Morty, <laughs> then this is what's called idol worship. Which, uh, so, well, if, if you don't, if you don't laugh, you'll cry, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, so this is, now I have, I've, 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 I've even put that, correspondence in different papers I've written since 2002. Um, yeah, so, so Prabhupada, so that is a Vapu form. Uh, uh, thanks, thanks for sharing that aspect, Monk. Yeah, so either why, why even bother having, why bother even having the Prabhupada Morty there? Why have, why have uh, uh, is the picture of the, of the Goswamis or, or any of the Parampara on the altar? Yeah. Why, why even have them there? If it's just only just a just like a, a symbol or something. something, right? And so Prabhupada makes it very clear, They're like yeah, as far as like what David Wolfrey Jogobinda does thinks, that's not particularly important. Prabhupada makes it very clear that that the pure devotee and only the pure devotee is fully present in their picture. That's why it's true. If if we start, even if it's only for twenty minutes a day, in the old. A few decades ago, it was 24 hours today. If we start putting pictures on the altar of persons who might even slightly be tinged by the mode's material nature, that is idol worship. That is idol worship. So Prabhupada gave us an altar where there's no question, all the personalities, whether Vishnu Tattva or Jiva Tattva, they're fully transcendental pure devotees and they're fully present. They, they have the empowerment to be fully present in in their in their photo in their picture, and uh, yeah, so I thought to share that. Thank you. Thanks for your comment. If if you yeah, uh, uh, Ramachandra, I'm just holding and holding it. Okay, okay. Hare Krishna. Um, so I mean, when I speak with different especially like our, our senior devotees and our elders in the community about this past time of Ramachandra. Like yesterday I had like a conversation with Nalini Kant and we reflected something. And, um, and everyone reflects something that connects to Grihastha Ashram, which everyone has like a different view on how Ramachandra, Lord Ramachandra uh, gives, uh, like shows an example in a way of like the troublesome condition and all those yeah. things. And I was wondering, what is your what is your realization about Grihastha Ashram in connection to Lord Ramachandra, the perfect householder, or whatever it like means to you, if you would like to share? I'm going to suggest 
See if, see if anyone else would like to share. Um, okay. <laughs> I've, I've talked a lot. Maybe more than you are. Let's see if anyone else wants to share. Okay. Gendra, yeah. Serial. <laughs> Everyone is speechless. Everyone is speechless. <laughs> okay, that's fine. We can talk about it in the evening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's, you know, I don't know that I have any meaningful personal realization. <laughs> there's a lot there. I, in my reading just now, I, I skipped a lot of purports. And there's one long purport where, where, Prabhupada, um, where Prabhupada talks about uh, that um, Sita Devi with such devotion, because she, she could have just continued in the life of a, of a, of a queen. She could have, she could have continued, but she, she went with Lord Ram. And so, so Prabhupada talks about how her devotion, and at the same time, that caused a lot of trouble. Caused a lot of trouble because then Ravana was attracted to her, like that. The um, the we read about Supranaka, and so you know Ramachandra was Ekapatni Vrat, and for Kshatriya that's quite an austerity, for such a powerful Kshatriya to have to have only one wife, um, and at the same time Purnamasi criticized him for that <laughs> then you know so Sitaram that's like that's like this archetype couple at the same time you know, w w if we go more fully into the Ramayan Ram gets criticized because at the end even though Sita passed the test of purity and chastity mm. he still he still banished her to the forest mm. right so these I mean I'm, I'm just raising questions for discussion and 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 some the way it looks some can say that well he was too attached to what people think because Ram was going incognito in his kingdom he was going in, incognito in his kingdom uh, just to see what's happening and you ever heard people joking about um, like yeah I'm not going to be I'm not going to be a henpecked husband like Ram. <laughs> like, oh, wow. Just see what people are thinking. So he banished Sita to the forest for the, for the last years. Okay. And so Ram's sometimes, he's criticized for that. He's criticized for killing Vali. We read about that. Vali was a monkey warrior and he killed him by shooting him in the back. And then there's a whole story, story around that. Any comments or questions? I want to clarify that. So he banished Sita into the forest after he took her back? He did. Like right after she got back? Not right after. Um, later, later in their past. Whether later means a year. Half a year. It was half, it was six I'm, months? I'm just kidding. Oh, it, it, maybe it was, maybe it was a uh, hundred years because, you know, there's different lifespan there. But yeah, if, even, even here, if, if we read on, if we read on into chapter 11 and certainly in the Ramayan, that's described. And they had two sons together, Lava and Kush, who became kings. And, and I think that the sons themselves were not happy with Ramachandra. So, so the base, so the answer is yes. He did. Eventually. He did eventually. But he had children with her first. <laughs> he had children. He but had children. He was banished to the forest when she didn't know she was pregnant. Like, I know it's a really hard part of the Ramayan. For me, it's the hardest part of the Ramayan because, because what's happened is Sita, she was proven to be pure by entering the fire and coming, coming, and coming out of the fire untouched. And then, like Diogovinda has expressed, that at one point, Narma Chandra, as a king of Ayodhya, he wanted to see how his citizens are, are doing. So he went, he went around the city, and then there is that comment from a washerman. I think it was a washerman who uh, makes that comment. 
And then, and then Lord Ramachandra, I felt like he, it was really important for him to, to have his um, citizen to respect him as a king. And then if they were not respecting him, then, then it will be really damaging for the uh, material and spiritual health of Ayodhya, of the citizen of Ayodhya. And so at that moment, he banished Sita, and I don't know the timing, but I, I know that she was banished to the forest and she was pregnant. And then she took shelter of the hermitage where Valmiki was. And that's when she gave birth to Love and Kush, the sons of Ramachandra. Mm -hmm. And I know she stayed there until they were teenagers, because there is a pastime when they are around teenage years, when they are going to fight against their own father, not mm. knowing that he is their father. Mm. And then, uh, yeah, and for Valmiki, is the one who told the story of the Ramayan. So it's, he has a very important role that he's playing in that pastime of Lord Ramachandra. But it is very difficult, at least for someone like me, who just like put, have a different places for a value system. I always found that Sita being banished to the forest alone, pregnant, is really, really difficult. <laughs> it's such a drama. It's a really, oh, Ramayan, this is a huge drama. In Ramayan. fact, the Ramayan and then the, uh, like, um, the Mahabharat, they are considered literature that's, that's entertaining for people. Like in India, in India, when there was no TV, no internet, no nothing, people will be entertained by reading the Ramayana or going, of, uh, going to plays of the Ramayana. In India, Sitaram are worshipped a lot more, as you know, than uh, Radha Krishna. And the Ramayana is so much part of the Indian culture of people like really being absorbed in the, in the drama of the Ramayana is all purifying. It's, it's better than any Hollywood drama. And that's a drama that people can absorb themselves and, and dive into and watch again and again and tell again and again and listen to again and again. That's going to purify them and elevate them towards the spiritual world. So yes, it's a big drama. Krishna knows that we love drama. <laughs> Cyril has written the 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 drama yan. <laughs> rama rama, lots of drama. And th <laughs> thank all of you for for identifying the Adi Keshava temple. Um, uh, Patrick. Yeah, I was. That was. I mentioned there was two things that were alive for me with the Ramayan, and the second thing was what you brought up about Sita being banished to the forest. So I'm, I was I was hesitant to bring it up because it can be uh, hard to understand and. It uh, rightfully brings up kind of women's issues, women's uh, women's stuff, you know, in history, and it's criticized for being, <clears throat> you know, there's women that view that as like, well, that's just how they treated women, and it's wrong, and you know, shouldn't be like that, and things like that. So it brings up women's issues, and but um, to me, there's a, it's it's part of the mystery of Ramachandra and Lord Rama's pastimes. Um, is that the purport, the true purport of that, um, that part of the Ramayan? And yet most of the Ramayan stops, or, or a lot of the recitations or stories of the Ramayan stops with, when Ramachandra, I guess Diwali, when they're coming back victorious from taking, uh, taking Sita back from Ravana, but then it goes on much and it, yeah, it gets very curious. And my, my understanding is that, uh, and of course I, have heard from perhaps not the best sources because I have kids, so I've watched different cartoons and books, and who knows, you know what? I've, but um, at least my basic understanding is that the the washerman was criticizing Rama because Sita um, spent a year with Ravan. So basically, you know, this washerman, his wife, had went. Uh, and been with another man <clears throat> and he was rejecting her because he was saying um, you know you were with another man I can't take you back and um, I guess I've heard it two different ways I've heard it he either said like you know I'm not such great a man as 
Rama is to take you back. I can't do that. Or he was you know, criticizing Rama in a way. And so to like uphold the Dharmic principles, because you said Rama Chandra is an exp expansion of incarnation that especially uh, exposes virtuous, you know, living according to Dharma and virtue and principles. Yeah. And so to like uphold the Dharmic uh, virtue of, of, um, of Grihasta, of the uh, Grihasta ashram, the sanctity of the Grihasta ashram, then uh, that's, that's why he chose to do it. And at the same time, um, like Lord Ramachandra was such an ideal and virtuous ruler that there was really no problems in his kingdom. Uh, even, even if like there was no complaints and one complaint was whenever a, a man came to say that his, uh, his son or his child died before he died. And that was like, the king was responsible for that. These kids are following me. Wherever I go, they're following. I'm trying to get away from them. Um, <laughs> so um, that was a complaint. So for this washerman to even say, to reject his wife and to even say anything remotely, that was like a major deal for the, yeah. because of the high standard that Ramachandra had for his kingdom. And um, so, but yeah, to me, it's a mis there's a mystery, mystery part of it. It's part of the intrigue of the Ramayan to like, to really get the full purport. I don't feel like I really have the full purport and I feel like it's probably something that's revealed. Um, and that, not that we need to be, you know, Prabhupada said, you know, Rama and Krishna, they're the same, but we like Krishna because we're Krishna devotees, you know, we're Hare Krishna. So we like, we like Krishna, but there's, you know, Vaishnavs who uh, worship Ram as, you know, centrally, but we're not like that. So it's not that we need to, fully understand the depths of the Ramayana, but it's something that is interesting to me. And, and I, but I think there's, there's something there. There's like a devotion there, you know, for Sita, for Sita to, there's like, there's a, there's some devotion there. There's some special devotion between both of them, even in that separation, you know, cause they spend a lot of their pastime is separation and Ramachandra in the evenings been leading classes on separation cause we're all in separation with this uh, virus. So there's a lot of separation, there's a lot of devotion and like upholding, but it is still a mystery, I think, overall. There's like a mystery to it. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, as far as like, in Krishna's pastimes, from the, from the uh, lenses of, let's call it ordinary standard virtue and morality, Krishna's pastimes have a lot more to answer to than Ram's pastimes. And with Krishna's pastimes, we just hear a lot about Prabhupada, the transcendental perspective. We hear a lot about how to process it, how not to process it, dangers. As far as the relatively few aspects of Ramachandra's pastimes that are like violations of, our apparent violations of standard morality from some points of view. Um, there's, there's much fewer of that, there's much less of that than in Krishna's pastimes but the relatively few aspects that are there in Ram's pastimes, we, we don't hear too much about it from Prabhupada. Like we can say, well, it's, it's transcendental, but as far as how it's transcendental, what's the lesson from it, where we get a lot of that from Prabhupada's comments on Krishna's pastimes, we, we don't get too much about that on Ramachandra's pastimes. As you said, Bhakti Patrick, our line is Radha Krishna, so that's more the focus. So I, I just have less, information and Bani from Prabhupada about Ramachandra's pastimes than I do about Krishna's pastimes. Can I comment to uh, add to Patrick's? Um, yeah, I just remember too that Prabhupada, he like he used that example because he speaks about it somewhere, how Sita is vanished all of a sudden. And, uh, it's like an example how a woman should like it's part of the chastity that she should not, like in the Vedic culture, a woman would not spend, if she would spend a night somewhere else, she would be considered a prostitute. And Ramachandra, Lord Ramachandra being, trying to set an example, he was trying to, he was just taking so much precaution of what people think about him. And I think that's like, like for me, kind of the message of like this pastime of like um, disastrous rehastral life, even for, 
for the Lord, for the Supreme Personality of God in it, is a, part of, a big part of the Griasta life is community in terms of like what people think about me and, and not always it's a spiritual like really community and, and when it's not spiritual community then the whole life is like a mess. So yeah, like overly considering what people think. Like in the age of social media, I think like we all can relate to that, but like people like on book distribution, for example, like when I want to take selfies with people that they just got the book or I can sort of read the mind that they thinking immediately, oh, he's going to tag me or like, oh my God, he's going to put me on YouTube and everyone's going to see that I got this book from this weird bold guy. <laughs> so this, yeah, it's kind of what I get from that, not to be too to self-conscious, uh, you say, uh, what people think about me. And... Thanks for that. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, yeah. Lord Ramachandra ki jai, yeah. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Sitaram Lakshman Hanuman ki jai, yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, happy Ram Hare Krishna, happy Ram Hare Krishna, happy Ram Namo. 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 Nam